Hi, welcome to the Commercial Gas Engineer channel. I just want to show you my commercial service sheet that I use when I go into plant rooms to carry out checks. So basically, um, I believe that all engineers should have something like this. Um, create your own if need be. Use mine if you want to. And give me some suggestions as to what you think I've missed out. So here it is. Um, because I carry out volume calculations, I have them here rather than bringing my book in the plant room. I have them here on my sheet. I can put my details in and do my calculations. Then once I've done my calculations, I can go over here and see my duration, my tightness test duration for an existing installation. And then I've also got my let by test periods over here. And I also have my meter volumes over here and turbine details down here. I also have ventilation details over here for open flue appliances. And I also have my room sealed here and my boiler room temperatures, my maximum temperatures. And also I'm gonna, you can write in your actual temperatures. I've got a space here for writing down certain key details such as my boiler details and my serial number. I do this because when I'm in, on site, I don't like to write out all my paperwork whilst my hands are getting dirty when I'm pulling out a burner, for instance. So instead of me using my tablet or another piece of paper, I just have a rough sheet of paper that I can write down my boiler serial number on, its make and so on, its kilowatt net, so I don't have to go back in the case. Sometimes I would take pictures, but with this method, it's easier for me to just write down quickly when I'm working on a boiler, which boiler it is, and so on, whether it's boiler number one, it's serial number, it's make and model, it's kilowatt input net, and also other things such as um, excess air and um, working pressure and so on in high fire and what burner pressure in high fire, low fire. And I have a few, few boxes here. This is my sequence of service that I like to follow. So the reason I do this is because I feel, for instance, could you imagine you're driving your car and you're following a navigator and the navigator gives you a choice at every junction? You can turn left here or you can turn right there. I feel that too much choice causes stress sometimes and confusion and also you can forget to do things. You can follow your service sheet that the company that you work for give you or if you're self-employed that you would like to follow. But the problem with that, I find that you'll miss things or it's awkward to get your tablet out or a bit of paper out or and to write too much details when it's asking you for like flu temperatures, this and that. I feel like those details should be done either in like an office setting or in your vehicle or something um, rather than you standing up in a plant room for filling it all out. So here we go. We've got step one, identify hazards. And then I think that's key, isn't it? Safety is key when you walk into a plant room. You need to look for what's going to cause you trouble um, your, and look for your safety mats there. Fire, things do go wrong in plant rooms. So think of hazards as soon as you walk into a plant room and your safety. Are you safe when you're working in there? If you're there in your own, are you safe? Does somebody know you're there? Okay, and you know other things that you need to check when you carry a risk assessment. Um, water and plug points. I When I go into a plant room, I remind myself that I'm not in an office-based scenario, so I have to make it as comfortable for myself as possible whilst I'm working. So I ask myself, are there is there a pressurization unit that I can get water from or something like that? Where's my water supply? If I'm going to be washing down the burners or something, um, I need to have water. Water is something good to have if I, if I burn myself and there is no burn kit in the plant room, at least if there's water for me to um, rinse my hand down for 10 minutes, that, that's a good thing. Um, also, plug point. Is there a plug point in the plant room? Um, can I charge my analyzer whilst whilst using it um, or charge my phone? Um, uh, toilet facilities. Uh, some plant rooms you may have, depending on what building it is, if it's a public building, you might have toilet facilities. Where is my nearest um, BSS? Um, because there have been times where I've been in a job and I didn't expect things to go wrong. And all of a sudden water is going everywhere and I need a cap a two inch cap ball and I don't have one on me but you know where the merchant is it's easier it, there's less stress when something goes wrong and things do go wrong in plant rooms um test boilers are working so before I'm sure this has happened to you 
um, you've gone to a boiler and not tested that to see if it's working and the customer may say to you it was working before you touched it or you may say to yourself as you go into a plant room was this actually working before I put my hands on it and clean the burner out so before you you touch a boiler check is this boiler working um, establish where the switch live is um, and, and so on high and low how does it go into high and low and so on um, and then next thing I've got on here is check central heating and hot water temperature so check your gauges as well so check your gauges for the hot water so you may walk in the plant room and see that they have 65 celsius on the chlorifiers and so you know that whilst you're carrying out servicing you don't want them to drop down to 30 celsius in a hotel for instance because there's going to be complaints unnecessary complaints errors on the bms control panel look see if there's any drawings schematics what lights are on on the panel take a picture and so on but have a good understanding of what is on if the panel can be opened without isolating the power um, be careful and take a look at which relays are on when everything is fine um, are there any manufacturer's instructions on site if there are not download some have a quick five ten minute read of the manual how to get the boiler in high and low if you don't already know and what the manufacturer states and so on details just have a, a look through the manufacturer's instructions before you start then Stage four, I have tightness test and CP16. You can carry out these in any whichever order you want. But the reason I do this is because I want to carry out servicing and for the boilers to be on long enough without them cutting out. So I turn my boilers off as soon as possible. So whilst my boilers are off, it stops you from, from scolding yourself or getting burnt when you're touching burners or probes because you've reduced the temperatures. And then you can go and start carrying out things such as a cp16 in the time being it, it could be an hour whilst the boilers are off in that time you can start carrying out other checks which do not require the boilers being on such as a tightness test your cp16 paperwork so you can get your volume calculations see how big the pipe size is see how big the meter is and so on and then you go over to the left and you could carry out your details on this sheet then ventilation checks so ventilation you can um, see how much ventilation the plant room has and then start writing out your ventilation details. You could go up here on the sheet and start writing that out and then write your plant room temperatures. And then once you've done that and you've, you've seen those details, you can go to the boilers, turn one on and you can flue gas analyze your boiler. And But whilst you're doing that, you can have your, your gauge connected and then you can check your burner pressure at the same time when you're doing your boilers in high rate and low rate so you can be getting your burner readings that's if the boiler has um, low rate as well and you can also possibly do your working pressure but i think the working pressure is something good to do once you have worked on all of your boilers so that you can turn the boilers on reasonably at the same time sometimes it can be hard to get all the boilers on at the same time but endeavor to get all the boilers on at the same time and get a working pressure even in certain circumstances as well it is good to turn all the boilers on and get a flu reading for instance when you're carrying out flu dilution checks or when you're you've just got a common flu it is good to turn the boilers on in high rate to see what kind of combustion you readings you get when they're all running so that could be something to be done last now on to seven this is when i'd be looking to strip a boiler down and clean it if i have the gaskets but certain atmospheric um, boilers you can start cleaning them down and so on and um, and brush brushing them through and so on and um, cleaning the, the ignition and detection probes with a file or replacing them and also looking at your spark distances and so on and you can also clean the condensate trap out if it is a condensing boiler and replenish the water and also do more commissioning checks and safety checks that are required um, for service um, also you can at this point if, if that boiler isn't working well you can issue a warning notice and put a warning sticker on and and isolate or cap if necessary you can also and then you can move on to the next boiler and so on and continue the same process of number six and seven and then you can once that's all done if you have a boiler that's not working you could leave that till last and if there's time remaining 
start diagnosing if that's fine with the company you work for or, or for yourself to see um, why the boiler is not working if you have the time and you um, um, are allowed the time to diagnose the boiler and um, once you once you diagnose what's wrong with the boiler and you're sure what's wrong with it sometimes what you can do in this scenario um, contact the manufacturer at this time for guidance or a colleague or at some uh, or you could possibly switch parts from if you know you have a working part you can switch your working part from another boiler if you suspect that that is the part that's causing the boiler's problem so long as it doesn't take too long and you're not going to cause any damage to the working boiler and also so long as you have more than enough boilers because i don't think it's good to swap parts when you only have two boilers two of the same boilers in a plant room because if you swap parts around and you only have one boiler and you damage the boiler which you have taken apart from you're really then you're in trouble because you then have no boilers working on the site so ensure that you um you carry a necessary thought, thought process before you just go and start swapping parts um take a risk in, into account all right and then you can carry out a cp15 and um, issue the CP15 on your PDA or on paper and so on. And um, these are just the last bits. Once it's all it's all done now, you can get ready to carry out your CP15s and hopefully in um, a comfortable environment, not standing in the plant room. And further work notes on site on your PDA as well. Um, and also any, so basically any other details. So I think it's good to leave details on site for the engineer that comes after you. It may not be you that's there. Somebody else may come after, or even for yourself, a note as to whether it's on the warning notice or whether it's on the decommissioning um, note or in the plant room. It's good to put some details, a little sticky note for something easy to find. It doesn't need to be hidden away in a book, but something easy to say, this is why this boiler is off. It requires such and such. Don't just turn a boiler off and not say anything. Um, so that is good to do. And also make sure that your office or your client know what's wrong with the boiler. But be sure about the diagnosis. No, Don't play any guessing game. You want to be like 90% sure. All right. Number 10, clean up. Uh, so this is a good time to clean up and make sure you don't forget any tools. Walk around the plant room and make sure you've got everything. You've issued all your, your paperwork now that, that's necessary. Just have a little walk around and clean up and make sure it's better than how you found it. If there's anything that the plant room should have that it doesn't have, make a note of that and so on. Make sure that the boilers are left running. I'm sure many a times you've worked on things and you may think afterwards, oh, did I check to see if that boiler was running? And then they may get a call out the night because you were servicing and you didn't check that you left the boilers on. So check their running, check the temperatures and then do one last check and do your fags. Like go around and just check your flues, your air, your gas, your safety devices again, because you have, you may have interrupted the gas supply. You may have interrupted, you may have taken off the flue test point and you just want to do a quick check um, to make sure that you haven't forgotten anything. It's, it, it doesn't hurt to double check that everything is in place. I hope that helps. Over here on the left, you can put the location that it was and any additional notes. Um, let me know what you think about this, this worksheet and how you also carry out your sequence of work because I do not believe that it is good to carry out work in a way where you are, even in a domestic setting where you're going to someone's house and you are one minute at the gas meter and you, and then one minute you're at the boiler and then you're like, oh, I forgot to lift up the cooker lid, the safety safety lid whilst I was counting up my tightnesses. Oh, I'm going to go back to the boiler. No, now I'm going to go here. It's good to have a method. And then you get more things in and do what is required of you by the manufacturer and by, by and within line with the law because you're following a pattern. And it's good for you to have um, the necessary tools and things with you so that you're not going to and from your van. So be organized, do things in a systematic way so that you're not um, chasing your tail and making excuses for not doing your job to a high standard because you, it, it can be done if you're organized and you have things in place. Okay, thank you for joining me. Until next time, bye-bye-bye.